today's video, I'm going to be doing a four-day food design, which as most of you would know by now is one of my absolute favorite topics. I love food, I love moving nail art, so all of that stuff that just goes right together hand in hand in my absolute favorite thing. So this one is going to be a Domino's pizza design, and it's got a pizza box that opens up and there is a whole pie in there minus one slice, and that single slice is across the tip of the nail with some bites taken out of it. And really quickly, before I let y'all watch the video, I'm going to share a funny story about Domino's Pizza and this little girl. Back when the pandemic started, we were cooking three meals a day, every single meal in the house, and we had no outside food of any sort, uh, you know, nothing for about two months. And all of a sudden, like, we just cannot cook anymore. So we decided that we would do Domino's delivery. And when the pizza got delivered and they rang the doorbell and they left, and I went to go get it, and she followed me along like a little duckling, right? You follow me around the house? Yes. So she followed me to the front door. I open the door. I pick up a pizza. Her jaw just drops and she goes, is that a, a pizza? I said, yes, it's, it's a pizza. And she goes, they just brought it here? And I said, yes, they did. And she goes, do I get to eat some? I said, yes, you do. And she did the funniest little happy dance all the way to the kitchen table and I think she had four slices. So apparently she was as sick of my cooking as I was sick of cooking it. So I hope you guys like this design. Domino's Pizza since then has just been kind of a funny little thing for me. I hope you love it and I will see you next time. Bye. So we are going to start out with an overlay of blue acrylic. I couldn't decide what color I wanted to do in the background. I didn't want to do like the cover pink because the pizza color is somewhat similar to that. And I didn't want to do white because that's the color of the box. So it's either blue or red. And I think either one is just fine, but the red seemed a little too harsh. So I had to go with a blue evidently and then we're going to be encapsulating that nail with a layer of clear acrylic to make sure it is nice and strong and just go over the whole thing give it a nice beautiful apex and all of that fantastic stuff once that's done we're going to be filing the nail into shape with an e-file just going over the whole thing making sure it is smooth leave the apex in place like it is everything else just gets smoothed so now on a piece of scratch paper we're going to be drawing our template with a pen make sure whatever pen you're using has a nice bold color ink to it so that the lines will be visible Visible through a nail form backing. That first shape you're going to draw is going to be the shape of a pizza box. Draw a circle in the middle so you know exactly how big to make your pizza when you go to sculpt that. And then you're going to need to make some bars on the sides for all of the different pieces of the box that go up from the box to attach the top to the bottom for the lid. So then you've got those four shapes for the four different sized side pieces. Lay your nail form backing on top of it and now using a tannish beige color we're going to be sculpting our pizza box. So some of these pieces you need two of. You need two of the top and bottom, that almost square first piece, and then those two on the sides you're going to need two of each of those. So the really short one and then the longer one that is on the side of this. The one on the top and the bottom you only need one of. So don't sculpt more than one of those, you just need one of each. And once you have all of these pieces sculpted, just set them to the side and try not to forget which one goes where. But just to start with, you're going to want to sculpt each of these. And the reason we're using this tan beige color is because the Domino's Pizza Box is a natural cardboard color on the inside and then it has the white coating with the Domino's logo on the outside. And so basically your choices would be to sculpt it all white and then paint the inside beige or sculpt it all beige and paint the outside white. And completely up to you, whichever you prefer to do. So if you'd rather sculpt it with white and then paint the inside, you can certainly do that instead. But otherwise, we're just going to go through and sculpt all of these pieces. We have two of those short little ones there. Try to make them as similarly sized as possible. It really does help to make a template like I did in the background. Um, a quick question. Would you guys like to have a live video, um, one of my live classes on drawing templates and kind of the math that goes behind it? Because I could certainly make a class like that if that would be something that would help you. We could go over a couple different designs for it and some different concepts. I don't know if that would be something anybody would be interested in, but that would be an idea. So now we've got all, all of our pieces are all sculpted out. We're going to start gluing all of the pieces to the bottom. So when we're gluing these pieces together, there's a shiny side where the acrylic piece was on the nail form backing and then kind of a natural looking side. You want the natural looking side to be inside the box because it'll give it just more of that cardboard appearance. So you want the kind of really smooth, shiny side 
facing out and that one I didn't do as you saw I just ripped it off because I was like hey wait a minute I put that on wrong so then I'm going to take it off and reattach it so that's just one of those like really fine details that if you don't worry about it's not going to be the end of the world but you know every little thing you can do can make a big difference and then once you have all of those pieces all six glued on to the base of your box you're going to want to go through and you're going to secure them all to your box with more of your tan beige color of acrylic as you can see in some of the places they don't fit together perfectly it's just the nature of the beast so there's going to be little gaps you want to make sure all of those gaps are filled in one so that it looks like a single piece of cardboard but two it's going to add just so much more strength to this if you're trying to rely just on your nail glue you're kind of asking for for disasters there so secure everything together best you can, any little spots that you see, and then you can go through and you can file it anywhere it needs to be. I'm first going to take and file a little indent into the back edge of my box. That's going to be for the hinge to rest in. And then after I have that done, I'm going to go through and I'm going to be just carving out the sides anywhere I feel like it got too thick or anything I feel like just needs to be a little bit smoother cleaner then this is the perfect time to just go through with your e-file and clean things up a little bit it's one of those extra steps again if you know if you don't eat don't have time or don't have the energy to do this step it's fine just skip it you know it's really not a big deal now we're going to string a bar bead onto a tiny piece of wire and we're going to secure the ends of the wire onto the box so that the bead is resting in that little area that we e-filed out that's for the hinge so if you want um this is another thing that i've thought about making a live class on is just making hinges and all of the different you know products i use the different um you know my preferences little tips and tricks I've come up with after doing these for well, it's been five years maybe and then we're going to after the uh, wires have been attached we're going to glue the bead onto the lid and then secure the lid to the bead a little bit more securely with some more of your tan acrylic now we're going to be sculpting our pizza and I know it looks like I'm using the exact same shade of tan as I used for the box but I assure you it is a slightly different color don't use the exact same color just you know one shade off is perfect and then you're going to use a craft knife that you've dipped into either clear or tan acrylic powder to carve out and cut out the one slice of pizza that will be removed take your e-file and just kind of or your not your e-file take your acrylic brush and just create a little indent around where the crust edge is and then to pick up that single slice of pizza that's loose you're going to pick that up you're going to place that on to the nail and then you're going to take your craft knife again and you're going to cut out those bites and I know that that wasn't in focus but um yeah you get that you get the gist you're going to take a slightly warmer color like an orangish goldish color to add some golden hue to the crust take some red acrylic and add your sauce and every time you're doing something to your pizza you're going to want to do it to the slices on the nail i'm not showing you that part because it's just the same thing but just know that you have to do it on both and then use some orange and white acrylic a multicolor bead and you're going to be adding your cheese just sort of swirl it on top place it on there if you know some of it some of the red shows through perfect and then you get to top your pizza and this is certainly the most fun part I think so I did green peppers and pineapple which is not actually a pizza I would eat which is funny I don't know why I did green peppers and pineapple it just was the two things that came to mind when I was looking at the colors and trying to decide on toppings I'm like you know what green peppers and pineapple that's what I'm gonna do lately anytime I eat pizza it's just been green and black olives because that's what Melody wants and I'm just gonna go with her so uh yeah all of all of all the way <laughs> but we're going to do these two different things i wanted multicolors. i wanted some color to this so we're going to be doing the little sparkly green peppers and then some little tiny pineapples and like i said you can top this with whatever you want there's so many different fun options i know one of my personal favorites for pizza is broccoli which some people think i'm crazy for but i think it's good so after we are done with our whole pizza and you're done with the box you can glue the box onto the nail then you can glue the pizza into the box and then once all of that glue has been set you're going to want to take some clear acrylic and you're going to want to fill in the little gap behind the pizza box with that clear acrylic so that it isn't so fragile that's the whole thing with this anytime you're securing something with some clear acrylic or more of whatever color it's just to make sure it doesn't break and now we're going to be taking some white gel paint and we're going to be painting the outside of the box start with the lid cure that after that's been cured or at least flash cured then you can go ahead and do the surrounding areas so i kind of did this in three stages so after i did that back part i flash cured it so that i could open the box and then you can paint around the rest of the front 
Just carefully do this. If you're using a white gel paint, make sure that you're trying to apply it in a nice even layer so it cures really, really nice and smoothly. But once that is done and it's been fully cured, you're going to want to take some blue gel paint and write dominoes. So when you're writing the dominoes with the blue, start with the I in the middle, and then you're going to do the N, O, and then you're going to add a little tiny space and then paint the S and the apostrophe. When you're doing it this way and you start in the middle of the word and kind of work your way outward, it just gives you better chances of having everything be centered. And you know, it's kind of funny when you're writing a word and you're trying to make sure it's nice and straight and even, and the more pressure you put on yourself to make it nice and straight and even, it just seems like it gets crooked or it gets bigger as you go or something. It seems like that's just how it works. So try to just relax, especially if you're new to hand lettering or you've had some uh, less than ideal experiences in the past. Just try to relax, start in the middle, work outwards, and don't look at it as a word so much as looking at it as as an art, like you're trying to copy an abstract pattern. For some reason, I feel like that helps, especially if you're painting it in a logo when you're trying to copy a certain font. It's easier to not look at it as lettering, but to look at it as, you know, an art shape. And maybe I'm the only one that thinks that helps, but I think that helps. So after you have the dominoes written in blue, you're going to add a blue square, and then you're going to add a red square to start out the little dominoes domino. And then on the front of the box, you can write large or medium or whatever size pizza you want this to be. So we're going to write out all of those letters on the front with the red you want to use the red for that too and same thing we started with the r and then added the ge and then the la keeping everything nice and centered we're going to touch up our little logo with a bit more white paint just to separate the blue from the red squares and then with a dotting tool add a single dot inside the red and a two dot inside the blue and now with some black acrylic paint, we're going to add just a touch of an outline around our pizzas, just to make them show up a little bit better from the box and from the nail. It's just a little shadow, not too much. If you wanted to skip this step, it really wouldn't be not a big deal. Now we're going to be applying a layer of gel sealer over the background making sure it is nice and smooth. It'll help fill in any little scratches left by your file or anything else that there might be. It'll just kind of smooth it all out. Cure that and then apply a layer of matte gel top coat over your dominoes box. So when you're applying it over the dominoes box, you're going to want to be very meticulous and careful not to glue your hinge shut or glue the lid to the box in any place. If you want to do this in multiple curing sessions to help with that, you certainly could. Once you're done with that, apply some gel glaze or some not gel, uh, 3D glaze. It's actually not a gel product. It's basically just a lacquer top coat over your pizza and over the pizza slice to make it look nice and glistening and greasy as we all know and love pizza. And that is it. That is this whole design. It is so much fun. You can certainly personalize it. You can switch up what brand of pizza it is. You could do, you know, Pizza Hut or whatever kind of pizza your favorite is. I know we eat Marco's pizza a lot around here too. And anyways, I hope you love it and I will see you guys next time. Bye.